Today's episode is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Get 85% off and three extra months free by using code DESIGNDOC at the link below. Welcome to the final test. The evil king of... evil has been waiting for you. Prepare yourself. Oh wait, you did already. You've got dozens of full restores clanking around in your backpack, and they've been there for the last six chapters. You're an unstoppable healing machine. The king is dead, you win. Maybe you could have used some of those earlier. Save some stress. Thanks, item hoarding. Item hoarding shows up in tons of games. It doesn't affect all players in the same way, but for a large chunk of the audience, item hoarding can lead to anxiety, more difficult games, and throw off the balance of the experience. But it's not completely their fault. Whether it's a trove of healing items in an RPG, a seven-figure bank account in an open-world sandbox game, or a storage chest with five of every crafting item in the world, hoarding is a player behavior driven by design decisions. Some of the decisions are accidental, some are negligent, and some are even unfortunate side effects of other good decisions. But we can fix this. The first step to solving a problem is to recognize it. So let's look at item hoarding behavior in games and the techniques you can use to reduce or eliminate the problem. But first, start your own hoard of international streaming content and data security with today's sponsor, Surfshark. Five star segue. Running low on stuff to watch? Maybe it's time to go international with Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, which is a tool that helps protect your privacy online. Connect to their servers and Surfshark will automatically encrypt your data and keep it out of the hands of hackers. Passwords, bank info, text messages, anything you do online. It's a great way to be safe while using public hotspots, but Surfshark gives you an extra bonus. Connect to one of their servers in another country and you can get around region locking for streaming services. Head to their Japanese servers and look at Japanese Netflix. There's a world of new content for you to access and all you need is Surfshark. I've been using it for a few months and I love how easy it is to use. Try it for yourself. There's a 30 day money back guarantee too, so there's no risk to try it out. Click the link below and use the code DESIGNDOC to get 85% off, plus three extra months for free. Thanks Surfshark. So what is hoarding anyway? In games, hoarding is the tendency to avoid using a limited resource. Usually a player hoards because they're scared of running out of something and not having enough for some point in the future. Don't use that full potion now. What if you need it later? Sometime. The classic hoarding behaviors usually show up in games with rare consumable items, but that's not the only type of game that has to design around hoarding. It happens with any limited resource. MP bars, currency, crafting items, it's all hoardable. Not every player will become a hoarder, but it's a very common issue. A large chunk of your player base will be prone to doing it, and it's worth designing around. In a vacuum, there's a logic in hoarding. Saving your best stuff for a rainy day makes sense, but for games, hoarding can fall into a vicious cycle. There's never a clear line where now is the right time to use it. To know that today is the rainy day. There's always a chance you'll need that item even more in the future, right? So you keep hoarding. Forever. The end result is the punchline of a joke. But luckily, there are tricks to reduce player hoarding. Some are simple things that help almost any game, and some are major overhauls, powerful tools that can cause knock-on effects, and maybe even bigger problems. Let's start with the base case. Final Fantasy's inventory show what can happen if you don't deal with pro hoarding design choices. We'll focus on Final Fantasy IX as an example, but the same issues crop up in almost every game in the series. First, the game's inventory limits are very high. You can store 99 copies of each unique consumable item. That can promote hoarding, because without a limit, or with a limit as high as this, there's no pressure to use it or lose it. Second, the best items in Final Fantasy are really strong. There are plenty of items like elixirs that bring you back to 100% for just the cost of one turn. It's an incredibly efficient way to get a party out of trouble. Well, not out of trouble, but that's another video. Click the video after this one. YouTube told me to tell you. This promotes hoarding because the stronger an item is, the more valuable it seems, and the worse it will feel to the player to have to use it up or to waste it. Third, 
The rarest items are pretty rare. You might go several hours between finding elixirs. The harder it is to refill spent stock, the more a player will want to cling to what they have. Fourth, game difficulty. Final Fantasy isn't the most difficult game series around. It's not a cakewalk, but it's usually not that tough to get through any challenge with a little strategy, or just through grinding levels. This can lead to hoarding because the easier a game is, the less pressure players will have to use up their best assets. They'll think they can probably tough it out without using anything, and usually they'll be right. Fifth, it's not super clear in Final Fantasy that players are getting close to the end of the game if it's their first time playing. Sure, a player will probably get a sense that they're nearing the end, but it's not clear how many more fights they'll have to get through. The more ambiguous a game is about how long the player will need to keep their stock, the more players will just want to keep everything they have for as long as they can. None of the decisions on their own are a big deal, but they each nudge the game a little bit to encourage more hoarding. Combined, they make almost a perfect storm of hoarding a lot of ethers and megalixers and stuff. Luckily, for each of these problems, there's a workaround. Hoarding is fundamentally about perceived scarcity, so to fix hoarding behavior, we need to find ways of easing player anxiety over that scarcity. One approach can be to place a lower hard cap on inventory space for single items. Shin Megami Tensei 4 does a fancy version of this. It puts a hard cap on individual items, but the cap number changes based on how powerful an item is. You might be able to hold 30 small healing items, but only 5 full heals. If the player hits that cap pretty quickly, it'll encourage them to use up items quicker. Other gains might be designed around a limited space for your entire inventory. Classic survival horror games, like Resident Evil 4, live for this. It's great theming, and a smart design choice. You have to cram everything you want to carry in your attaché case. Space is quite limited, and the bigger and better items tend to take up a lot of space. So you only want to take what you need, and use or drop the rest. Though there is another design choice that this approach makes you do. If the game was stingy about giving items, but still had a small inventory cap, the pressure to use up your items, and the pressure to hoard, would clash pretty hard, and would make the game more difficult, if not just more unpleasant to play. Resident Evil does a great job throughout the series of pacing out your resources. It's pretty rare to have a moment where you're completely starved for ammo or healing items, as long as you're not too reckless with them. The series also gives a little leeway with item boxes and safe rooms, that let you store some of your excess to create your own little personal resupply store. But that's not the only approach. Some games push players to use up their inventory. Ammunition in Doom 2016 comes and goes pretty quickly, and the game uses that to encourage you to swap out weapons and change up your tactics. Out of shotgun rounds? Well, you just picked up some plasma rifle ammo. Try that next. Out of that now? Go for the rocket launcher. Doom usually gives back about an equal amount of resources the player has spent. So even though the resources can look scarce, they don't feel that scarce in the moment. Other items like the chainsaw will make enemies drop even more ammo for your favorite weapons. So there really isn't as much of a drive to hoard ammo. Okay, what if you tried to solve the problem from another angle? What if we took the consumable part out of consumable resources? Why not instead make some of your most useful items regenerating or rechargeable in some way? The Estus Flask in the Dark Souls trilogy is a cool way of implementing a limit to your health potions in a temporary way. You have a limited number of times that you can heal with an Estus Flask, but you can refill those charges whenever you rest at a bonfire. The short-term limit puts a better defined bounds around how long you have to keep the resources around for. The game can be designed with those limits in mind, and managing your Estus Flask can become a skill a player can improve at over time. It's a natural path for useful in-game upgrades too, and there are even buffs that let you slowly regenerate charges without a bonfire. Careful though, a rechargeable resource can cause unintended consequences. Look at Dishonored. Dishonored has a unique mana regeneration system, but also has traditional consumables. When you use a power in Dishonored, your mana drains. But, if you wait about 5 seconds before casting another spell, the mana you've spent will regenerate. If you blow through your mana pool by casting a bunch of spells too quickly, you'll lose the mana, and the only way to restore it is with stock mana potions and random food pickups. The system is there to balance out your powers, but in practice it discourages experimentation. Dishonored is great when you're skillfully swapping between your abilities and quickly chaining them together to pull off some insane stunts, both in combat and especially while you're sneaking around. But the mana regen system puts a damper on trying to chain a bunch of spells together. 
It makes it valuable to slow the pace of your magic use, since it conserves your mana, but that makes the game play at an awkward pace. Teleport, wait. Teleport, wait. Teleport, wait. What could have been a cool, flashy sequence can easily turn into a highway with a speed bump every 20 feet. There are a good number of options to restore mana, but it's still a finite resource, and using it carelessly can still put you in tough situations. Especially while you're learning the game, which is also when you're just figuring out the rhythm of both the stealth and the combat. It can push a player prone to hoarding into playing much more slowly and conservatively, instead of at the speed where the game shines, all because of resource hoarding. Dishonored shows that there are a bunch of other forms hoarding can take besides that Final Fantasy style consumable item hoarding. For another, let's look at crafting systems. They're prone to hoarding too, and it can happen on a wider scale. Crafting games make a hoarder ask a slightly different question. Instead of thinking, what if I need this item later, on a few rare and powerful items, crafting games can make you wonder that about practically every item in the game. What if there are some great crafting recipes that require early game materials? Or, what if you need stuff from an area you can't get to anymore? How can you know whether any item is safe to use or safe to sell? You have to proactively design around that problem. First, the more info you provide in-game, the better. Knowing whether or not a component is rare can help. Giving players the location and drop rate also makes it easier to know what's important to keep. Instead of forcing players to look up the info on an independent website, just put it in the game. Monster Hunter World is a step in the right direction, Character progression is entirely tied to your craftable equipment and items, so crafting those items is a big deal. And hoarding items would be a bigger problem if the game was more opaque about how to do it. The Monster Field Guide is a solid in-game resource that pinpoints where item drops are and how frequently they'll happen. The game spreads out the different ways you can gain resources beyond just grinding out materials in the field. The Botanist, Palco Safari, the Argosy, and the Elder Melder all let you buy, create, or passively farm for specific types of crafting materials, which streamlines the process of making items. There's a crafting wishlist that keeps track of specific materials you're aiming to find. There's also a little note on each item that lets you know whether or not the item is meant to be sold. These little tools make it much clearer how you can go about making the things you want to make, and reduce the need to hoard everything in sight. Okay. Crafting games and games with consumable items can lead players to hoard if they aren't proactive about addressing the problem. But there are other games that actively make the problem worse with elaborate mechanics that encourage hoarding. Final Fantasy VIII's controversial junction system is so pro-hoarding it hurts. Instead of the usual magic and MP system, spells are treated as consumables that you can stock up to 99 copies of. But where it really gets out of hand is how you attach those spells directly to character stats, and the more copies of a spell you have, the stronger the boost. It's a fun twist on the standard RPG magic system, but it's a hoarder's nightmare. Using a spell consumes it, and losing a copy of a junction spell makes your character stats immediately weaker. Finding replacement copies of a spell in FFA is practically identical to hunting for rare components in a crafting game, and has all the same hoard-inducing problems that we talked about earlier. It all adds up to a gigantic incentive to never use any magic. Paper Mario Sticker Star has a system that discourages using consumables too, but instead of just making your characters weaker if you use them, it can stop the story progress in its tracks. In Sticker Star, every attack is a single consumable item. These stickers. The rare ones are better attacks, but don't use them. Boss fights and puzzles in Sticker Star usually revolve around using one specific sticker, called a Thing Sticker, at the right time in order to weaken the boss or make progress in the puzzle. You can only hold one of each unique Thing Sticker, but you can use them pretty much whenever you want. Once you use one, it's gone. Even if it wasn't the key one to use in the boss fight or puzzle. Even if you used it up in a fight with a random encounter and you needed that sticker to beat the boss. If you waste the sticker, you're pretty much forced to backtrack to get another copy of it. Without using the right sticker, it's going to be extremely difficult to win, to the point where it feels like an accident if you just power through. In effect, it makes experimenting with using a new sticker a terrible idea, even if it's just to try it out to see what it does. You're discouraged from seeing some of the most fun visuals of the game, all because of pro-hoarding design. Other games have natural anti-hoarding systems baked in. Roguelikes and roguelites fight off hoarding through a pillar of their core design, run-based gameplay. It's not a tool that every game can use, of course, but if you can, it will fix the problem. 
In games like Enter the Gungeon, The Binding of Isaac, or Spelunky, resources are scarce and unpredictable. Normally, that would promote a ton of hoarding, but each run of the game isn't meant to last very long. When things finally go south, you can't carry much, if anything, over to your next run. So you better use all your tools while you can. Losing a run because you didn't buy enough at the last store you saw, or because you held back on using an awesome weapon for too long will sting. And the sting quickly encourages players to not hoard. The quick turnover between runs also lowers the pain of failure, since failure and restarting is meant to be part of the game. The situation that hoarders are trying to avoid, the pain of not having enough when you need it, isn't really a big deal in roguelikes, so the behavior goes away. Games with survival elements like Metal Gear Solid 3 and Don't Starve have naturally draining resources as a part of their mechanics, and those discourage hoarding too. In both games, food expires on a built-in timer, and once the timer hits zero, the item stops being useful. Stashing away a big pile of them is inherently a waste of time. For Don't Starve, the long-term goal revolves around working your way towards a system of regenerating resources, maintaining the system, and expanding on it. Hoarding doesn't help. The ultimate solution to the hoarding item dilemma is to not have things to hoard in the first place. Xenoblade Chronicles gets partway there by largely doing away with in-battle consumable items. There are no potions, ethers, or revival items. MP isn't a factor. Healing in battle is tied to an ability with a cooldown meter. Without items to hoard, hoarding isn't a problem. Yeah, it sounds really dumb when you say it out loud, but it works. Can't argue with that. Item hoarding pops up in lots of different ways, for many different reasons. Check out the comments and let us know some of your examples of item hoarding, and your favorite anti-hoarding techniques. You can't stop every player who tends to hoard, but there are ways to help ease the minds of a chunk of your player base. If you keep an eye out for systems that incentivize hoarding and use the right techniques, you can really clean house.